Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of The Pastor's Heart. Glad you could join us. We're so excited. We're halfway, almost halfway through uh, what God's got for us. We're talking about in intimacy for the Word and for truth and uh, all that that encompasses, which is a lot. <laughs> Our guest this week is Bishop Emmett Bright from Christ Temple All Cultures Ministries. I'm Rip Kenley, the station manager here at WGNM. Uh, want to always mention at the top of our broadcast, we're here to pray for you. 474-3986. Uh, if you've got a prayer request, please feel free. Call that number. Leave the prayer request. Also, prayer at WGNM.com. Uh, we want to know what's going on. We want to connect with you. I want to mention, too, real quick. I haven't mentioned it yet this week. Uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Twitter. Uh, website. We're on all of those. Uh, we got streaming off of our website. We've got Facebook and Twitter. We're, we're getting more and more consistent with it every day of the week. Uh, we, we just seem to, we're seeing such a response through all of those social media interactions. You know, it used to be television just sent signals to you and you picked them up and you watched what was on there. Now you get to get feedback and you get to find out what's going on. Uh, just before we started taping this, I tweeted out, uh, hey, we're getting, to, getting ready to record some Pastor's Heart episodes with one of our great pastors and, you know, y'all pray for us. And, and so I, it went out and I, I've already gotten response from actually another pastor in the area who said, hey, praying for y'all, keep going, you know. So, I mean, there's a connection there on that social media. Um, so please, if you're on any of those, uh, sign up, uh, particularly uh, at the time of this taping, we're just under 200 friends or fans on our Facebook page. I would really like to go over 200. It's just we've been hovering right under 200 for a while. So if you're not, if you haven't liked our page on Facebook yet, please go to Facebook and sign up, and we'll be happy to to create a dialogue there. Just so excited about that. It's always fun to do. Uh, it's, technology is, can be fun. It can be a great tool. Mm -hmm. We've also been talking a lot about new wineskins. Uh, what is new wineskins? Well, it's, simply put, it's our high-definition fund. And we're transitioning from standard definition to high definition. And one of the things I've really wanted to talk about, and I'm always really excited about, production and programs. Uh, we've got all of this space out back. It used to be a warehouse. We want to do some production that is high quality, that is good for the body of Christ here in middle Georgia. I particularly one, you know, we have such a great musical heritage in both Macon and the surrounding areas. And it's all different types of music. Uh, some of it may be your thing. Some of it may not be your thing. But, you know, I think uh, we would benefit from a show. I've already got the name for it. I'm not going to give it to you yet, but it's, I've already got the name for it. What we'd like to do is to be able to bring in either choirs or praise teams from different churches and let them record a few songs and then build up a library of praise and worship mm -hmm. and then assemble it in a, into a, a daily or a weekly program where we start off the day or the week here in middle Georgia lifting up praises from different congregations. Okay, We could do that with a new studio. We could do, uh, and that would also go to show uh, you know, that, you know, what another church is doing isn't so different from what you're doing. God's moving in all of our churches. 
and you'll find out that, you know, while we have a little different, there may be a little different flavor here and there, one of our station managers calls it, it's kind of like going to Baskin Robbins. There's 31 flavors, but it's all ice cream. Oh. Um, but if we got together and had that where we transition from one church to another church to another church and see how we're praising and worshiping. Mm -hmm. And then we could do Bible study programs with an audience and the audience asking questions. Uh, we could do pastor's heart with more than one camera. <laughs> right now you see what you see here is what you get. Um, we're in a small uh, office space that uh, used to be the sales office when uh, we were a UPN affiliate. You talked about wrestling the other day. I was yeah. thinking about We carried wrestling for a while. We're the only Christian station to carry wrestling. Um, but you've got so many opportunities. There could be churches that want to produce a program that's not typical. Like a, uh, they don't want it to just be a, a, a last week's service. They want to do something a little different. Uh, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with the other, but there's get some variety in here. We can do that with a studio, and that's what this fund is going to help do. Um, we, we need three to four high-definition cameras, and that right there is somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve to $20,000, depending on bells and whistles. Um, we need, but we're going to need tripods for those, and wheels and controls and monitors and cabling and uh, lights. Uh, the lights are different. So there's so much into it. We've got to have uh, grid work to, su to suspend from the ceiling so that you can hang lights. Um, there's just so much to it that we need to do and we really need to get it off the, off the ground. I just think about all the different things we can do with a studio, a full-fledged studio, uh, that will benefit the kingdom. But we need your help. Uh, if you just ask the Lord what he would have you do and then obey, that's all we ask. We're not asking for a specific amount. Uh, if you would like to give through your credit or debit card, uh, you can call us here at the office, 474-8400, um, for the HD. We can set that up as a recurring a monthly charge or we can do a one time either way or if you want to do check or money order uh, our address for this our shipping our mailing address is suite 364 5962 zebulon road macon georgia 31210 uh, feel free to you can do a check or money order just make sure you put either new wine skins hd transition or hd fund uh, any of those will help get it to the right, and we all know how important it is to get things to the right fund. Um, so we're excited about that. We want you to join and partner with us. We'd be more than happy. I think you'll see the benefit uh, of what it will do for us. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Christ Temple All Cultures Ministry. What could somebody who just walks in, what can they expect to find when they walk through the doors? Well, I believe when they walk into the doors of Christ Temple All Cultures Ministry, a uh, person will immediately sense the, the warmth, the, the friendly atmosphere, and the love of God, the presence of God. Uh, people that came with uh, a purpose in mind, and that is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ to give glory. Uh, our um, mission statement says that we're establishing beloved communities where God is glorified, Saints are edified, and lost souls are being evangelized. So when you come into a Christ Temple service, you're going to uh, experience those three things. You're going to see God's name being exalted in praise and worship, uh, the saints of God encouraging one another, and, uh, and souls that are not within the kingdom as of yet, being loved on, cared about, and encouraged to be a part of the kingdom of God. That's fantastic. Um, our, the information, their contact information is up there. Uh, the website is ctacministry.com. Uh, the phone number, 784-7732. Uh, they're out there on Hollis Road out behind Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Uh, hey, 
<laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows where the Krispy Kremes are. I got, you know, I got an app on my phone that'll find Krispy Kreme. Right. Um, <laughs> I know you can't tell, but um, they're over in that neighborhood. That's a good landmark. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just uh, recently uh, recorded another episode uh, with a different pastor who's planted a church next to a Cracker Barrel. So we we're, we're getting really good about using food as reference points. Yes. Sir. <laughs> uh, they, they're service times. Uh, they have plenty of service times to make, to, to uh, attend Sunday school at 9.45, but main worship there at 11 a.m., uh, Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Uh, there's a daily prayer and Bible study noon to 1 p.m. Uh, so if, you're, if you've got a, uh, if you don't have a church home and uh, you feel like you, you, well, you do. You don't need to feel like it. You need to get planted. Uh, something that Bishop says uh, during the course of this week resonates with you, I would encourage you to check them out. Uh, find out what they're about. Go visit them. Talk to some people. Don't be shy. Shake some hands. Mm -hmm. Don't just slip out the back. Yeah, um, and uh, they'll, they'll make sure that you, if, that, if it comes to that, they'll make sure you have a good church home and, and you can get rooted and grounded I was trying to say both of those at the yes, same time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so please avail yourself of that. All right, we've been talking about intimacy for the word and truth they're, and how they're intertwined with each other. And you can't, they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you throw the fact that Jesus is the word and, and the truth and he's part of the same thing. So you're, this is a whole concept here mm -hmm. of intimacy with Truth, the Word, our Savior, and it's good stuff. Yes. So, all right, we, we kind of going into some purpose on the scriptures here today, and I'm going to let you go ahead and just take it. Okay. Um, if I can, just for a moment, also that, that noonday prayer and Bible study that mm -hmm. was mentioned, uh, that is going absolutely wonderful. Every day, Monday through Saturday, from 12 noon to 1 o'clock, we have a a season of prayer and bringing forth the Word of God for about 30 minutes and then we close with prayer. And we've seen miracles. We've seen people come and receive the Holy Ghost during oh, the wow. noonday Bible study and prayer. Uh, we've even had baptisms in the, during the noonday uh, where people are coming from work just for that hour and, you know, getting, that, getting the, the nurture of the Word of God in mm -hmm. that time of prayer. Many times people are facing issues on their jobs where right. they're stressing the, you know, and the pressure and so forth. They just need a, a different atmosphere to help navigate them through the rest of the day. And they've been able to come and, 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 and the Lord will meet them there mm -hmm. in prayer and through the sharing of the Word of God. You know, so, I would encourage you, I mean, and uh, this is something I'm kind of spontaneous on this. There are people looking for work. And while, you know, you're not going to their... To, he doesn't have a job for you necessarily. <laughs> but if you are spending uh, a certain amount of time every day uh, looking for work, I would suggest if you have the ability and the capability to get here, to get to his church, take some time out of your job search. Now, don't blow off an interview, but take some time out of your job search to attend this meeting. Um, and and Because right now, you know, I believe in tithing. Uh, but if you have no income, 10% of zero is zero. Um, but if you are looking for work, what you do have is time. Mm -hmm. And he gives you a fresh 24 hours every day. Yes. I would take some time, and I really believe that it would be beneficial for if you have the ability to get to this location or any other location where they're doing any sort of midday Bible study, Get in that and take some of the time out of your job search. It'll keep you energized and refreshed while you're on your job search. So I just got to worry. It's, a, it's amazing that you'd even make that uh, uh, suggestion and, 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 and give those instructions because we have seen members of our congregation who were in, unemployed and they begin to come to the noonday prayer and Bible study. And that became one of the topics of prayer. We're going to pray for people who are needing mm -hmm. work. And I could, I mean, there's testimony after testimony of individuals who were part of that noonday prayer became faithful to it, that God opened doors for them to obtain work. It, it was just, it's just astounding. One of the, the elders said, 
uh, we're going to have to uh, let people know if they're looking for a job, they just got to come to noon. Instead of going to the unemployment <laughs> office, just come over to the noonday prayer because God's giving jobs. And we hadn't <laughs> talked about that before. so I mean, we didn't, teach, we didn't talk about that beforehand. So It is amazing, but we're, we're seeing that happen. You, I, know? you know, and I've seen, I encourage people, let's just say if you're doing, a, if, if your job is looking for a job and you've got a 40-hour work week looking for a job, I always suggest uh, when you, if you have a church, give four hours a week mm. because that's what you've got. You don't have money to give, but you do have time. And I guarantee you, wow. your church, uh, in, in regards to service, your church n needs the help. Y you need to be able to give something. And right now, what you got is time. So there Beautiful. you go. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it when God does what he's so mm, good at. <laughs> he's so good at it. He's so good at it. All right, you wanted to get into some of the purpose of these scriptures and, 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 and why they're so important. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Okay. Well, I know, well uh, there's a, a key scripture that I want to read in, in, in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 15 and 16, and maybe 17, but it's Paul writes to the young preacher and he says to Timothy, uh, concerning Timothy's life, he said, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Then he said, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for these reasons, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And so Paul is telling Timothy that, you know, you came up in Sunday school and from a child you've known the Holy Scriptures. Why? Because it was God's plan was to keep his word before his people. The, the, the priest's uh, responsibility was the, the uh, reading of the word before the people. The father's responsibility in the home was to talk of the way of the Lord with their children when they rise up, when they're sitting in the house, when they're walking along the way, was to keep them mindful of the word of God. And Jesus himself uh, uh, being confronted by the enemy, we'll get to that in a moment, where he says, uh, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall a man live by. And, and so Timothy was raised up by his mother uh, and Example of his grandmother Eunice, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and and, it was, and and he know the scriptures. And Paul said the scriptures were able to make you wise, able to make me wise. Yeah, because the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of His mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So God is 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 the the source of all wisdom. He's the source of all true knowledge, and He's the source of our uh, understanding. And so Timothy, being raised up in 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 uh, worship unto the true God, he understood that the Scripture was able to make him wise unto salvation, and through through faith, through believing what the Word of God says. And then Paul said the Scriptures were given by inspiration over there, were God breathed. And they had these purposes uh, profitable for doctrine. Uh, sad to say, uh, when 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 we you many times when groups come together, the, uh, the issue is well, let's not talk doctrine. Well, there's no way to talk about the Bible <laughs> and not talk doctrine Absolutely. because it is the doctrine of God. Okay, and and it is and it was given to us and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Correction, instruction, and righteousness. So the word of God is is like the plumb line, okay. And uh, construction, the you may have seen the string with the little right. pendulum on the end, okay. What that plumb line does, it actually uh, shows the builder when something is uh, out of order or when something is not straight. The plumb line doesn't straighten the building; it only tells the building or uh, shows where the building is not correct, where it's uh, crooked or whatever, mm -hmm. it takes the, the builder then to straighten out what's wrong. The Bible, amen, only shows us what is not right. Then it becomes our responsibility as one that loves the word, loves truth, to then straighten the matter out with God's mm -hmm. help, of course. Absolutely. But the, the scripture is to instruct us. 
uh, the Bible says that the, the wise man will hear and will increase in his learning. But a fool despises instruction, don't want to be instructed. So many times the reason why people don't read their Bible, don't fall in love with the Word of God, because they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to be instructed in righteousness. Again, the Word of God is called a light. And Jesus said uh, in John 3, he says uh, when he came that uh, men were not going to be, con uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay? Uh, he that believeth is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He said, and uh, here's the condemnation, that light has come into the darkness, but men love darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their deeds were being exposed, mm -hmm. and they loved what they were doing. And because the Word brought light and of instruction and correction, they didn't want the Word. Okay? And this is why we have to have a love for the truth. No matter how much truth hurts, I must embrace it. If I want my life to be uh, pleasing to God, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm uh, wanting to receive the promise of God of salvation. I, I wrote this down, and it, it was simply this. What's better, a lie that will make me smile or a truth that will cause me to cry? Well, the, the, the reality is, or the, the, the realness of that is, uh, the truth that will make me cry is better than a lie that will make me smile. Okay? Because the truth is the only thing that will set me free or make me free and make me wise unto salvation, mm -hmm. as the Lord has told us about the Scriptures. Hey, go back to the old uh, working out axiom, you know, uh, no pain, no gain. No Sometimes, pain, no gain. You know, a tr when truth... Sometimes brings a cutting. The, the word is described as a scalpel sometimes, d dividing. And so there's, that's painful. You know, sometimes you have to have, if there's something that needs to be cut out, you have to do surgery. You have to let the word perform some surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, my father just had, as we were taping this, my father's recovering from knee replacement surgery. And it's, there was a surgery, a surgery, there was cutting, there was, uh, you know, and so you have to recover from that. And it's, there's, but in the long run, he's going to be able to use this knee, he's going to be able to do this and that, but go through that temporary, uh, temporary pain. Sometimes the correction, we don't want to be corrected. It causes temporary pain. Mm. It's, a, it's a temporary, no, I don't feel good about that. You know, I had, a pastor sit right here in this chair and tell me one time that he had gotten to a point in his preaching where he would decide what he wanted to say and then go find scriptures to support what he wanted to say. And then he said he was doing some study. I can't remember the book of the Bible he was studying, but he was doing some study and he just glossed over a couple of uh, verses and because it didn't agree with his... <laughs> Uh, theology mm -hmm. and he really felt the Lord say hey go back and read that again but I don't want to well yeah go and he kept reading it and reading it and reading it and he, he, the Lord made him read it over and over and over again and finally he realized I've been wrong my God <laughs> the, it was the, the, the scripture corrected something that was an error mm. So, I, you know, it's, it's really cool how he's got it set up. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, just a good example of that, uh, real, um, you, you've heard the, the statement that's being used because Jesus one day made a statement because they, they say that you being a man make yourself equal to God. And then Jesus uses, goes to a scripture and he says, have you not read in the scripture where it says, and ye are God's? little g. And so there are there is a, a teaching that that proclaims that that we are gods, little g. And I never really felt comfortable with that statement or that view. And so I went back and did some study myself to see. And 
you find that that word God, which is Elohim, but it also meant magistrate, uh, judge, a ruler. And you go back over in Exodus chapter 22, uh, where uh, Moses began to tell them that they were not to reprove or they were not to uh, uh, insult a God, the gods, which were the rulers of Israel. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Paul found himself confronted by uh, um, one of the, Caiaphas, one of the leaders, and he said to him, say, you know, um, you know, you judging me, but yet you smite me against the word and call him a, a whited sepulcher. And then the, the men said, revilest thou God's high priest. And Paul then refrained to say, I apologize. He said, I did not know he was the high priest. And, and he said, for it is written, thou shalt not revile God's high priest, or the rulers. But this word God there had nothing to do with us being spiritual gods, yeah. but as leaders and rulers. And Jesus himself had made the statement that uh, the Father had given all judgment unto me. And Isaiah prophesied, or when Michael prophesied, that he will come in and govern and rule his people. So Jesus was taking the position as a ruler in Israel because of the position that he had been given by the Father. And so, but to, to, and so to take that scripture and say that we are all gods when we get saved, then th that was not correct according to the scriptures. And they took a, 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 a text out of its context and tried to apply it mm -hmm. as a universal truth. Uh, one thing I learned a long time ago is you can, you, can, you can virtually make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. You can, yeah. but you have to manipulate the, the scriptures. Uh, as an example, the Bible says that uh, uh, Judas Iscariot, the disciple of Jesus who, who betrayed him, uh, he, the scriptures say after betraying the Lord, he went out and he hung himself. Okay? Uh, well, then there's another scripture in the, uh, where Jesus was speaking, and he says to his disciples, he said, go ye out and do likewise. Now, if you take that statement of Jesus, go ye out and do likewise, and try to put it together with the statement where Judas went out and he hanged himself, well, what is the Bible telling you to do? Do what Judas did. Go hang yourself. <laughs> but then there's another scripture that says, thou shalt not kill. So then it makes the Bible look like it's a bunch of contradictions, and, you know, nobody's agreeing with nobody. And it, it's not that the Bible is not in agreement, it's that people are taking scriptures out of its proper context right. and trying to put it where it does not belong. And so this is why Paul says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, Amen. rightly dividing the, the word, word of truth. truth. We're going to do some more of that tomorrow because we're out of time today. <laughs> time goes away, doesn't it? Yes, so we'll see you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of The Pastor's Heart. <laughs>